All right, looks like I'm back, loyal YouTube subscribers. Today is EJ20X day. That's right, we're gonna get it done today. So, and also, and also, I'm gonna show you every single thing that you need to know to put them into the USDM legacy and do it easy. That way, you can get the engine, it's gonna come in on a pallet, you're able to just take your motor over there, the old 2.5 curse, which is already poop glitter, if you've already uh, checked out the last upload. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and swap all the sensors from this over to the EJ20X. Now, this is a 2.5 liter. This is a 2 liter. Yeah, this, is, this can absolutely be done, and it's going to be easy. So, with that said, yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, I'm a little overly enthused on this upload just for the sheer fact that I waited a freaking month basically for some valve cover gaskets. That is the main reason why I haven't gotten this done. Now, I just stated how easy it was and it's been a month since the last upload. Well, how easy can it be if you're at the exact same progress that you uploaded? That's why, guys. I, you know, it's a debacle. It's one of those things where you buy from a uh, outside source you never, you know, never bought from before. And I tried them out just for the sheer fact that they were the only ones that had the part. So they said they had three available. It took three weeks before they would even answer the email and actually ship out the valve cover gaskets. I finally have them. Woo -woo! And now I get to actually put this thing back together so it doesn't have a stupid oil leak. And that was the main reason why I didn't want to put it in was because of an oil leak. You know, how silly would it be to actually put that in there and then have to change a valve cover gasket when the motor is sitting inside that? That's just silly. That's a lot of work for uh, something that you could easily done before it even went in. So with that said, yeah, let's do this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give a little bit of general knowledge on the uh, the actual swap here. So right here, we are looking at the EJ20X. Now, the main things that I've actually noticed that are different are number one plug, you come over here, totally different. So that's gonna have to be changed as well. So that's that's one, pretty simple. You unbolt that, you swap it over here, Boom, bolt comes out, sensor goes on, bolt goes back in. That was easy. And then this tube here, this is your vent tube for the top of the valve cover. That's a little bit different than the actual USDM one, as you can see. Oh, my heater's kicking on real quick. Hold on, let me kick that off real quick. I haven't got my wood still finished. As you can see, it's kind of buried with lumber over there. I still got to rebuild the outside wall, but back to the EJ20X. So with that said, um, you can see that the top tube is actually different, but because they actually provided the actual vent tube, I actually don't have to swap that over. So if you end up getting the, uh, the long block here without any of the, uh, the vent tubes and whatnot, then you will absolutely have to swap over your USDM one in order to fit. Now, um, I see that it, you know, it's basically, you know, the only thing that I can see that it might possibly get in the way, but I don't see it happening. Um, it, it seems to be the exact same as the other one. It just, this here, this section here, and then this section here, as you can see, is uh, rubber on the other one. It's metal, just this part here. So that's really the only thing that's different. And then that's why that this is shorter because it's actually metal here on that one turn. When in this case, it's rubber. That's, that's literally the only difference I see in that stupid little tube. So because they provided it, I don't have to swap it. And that's awesome. So moving on to the next thing that I see as different is the PCV valve. Now this one's actually just got a simple press on boom, boom. When you come over here, it's actually tapered down to a smaller nipple. So this will actually have to get swapped over as well. 
And um, yeah, other than that, I mean, it's it's pretty relatively easy as far as having to do this. Your um, normally in JDM engines, you don't get an oil cooler, but this EJ20X actually has an oil cooler on it, which I thought was you know thumbs up for me. And so that's one thing that I don't have to swap over, which is a normal thing. That's normality for JDM swaps, especially turbo engines. They don't normally have that oil cooler. So that's cool. I don't have to swap that over. Uh, we are going to have to swap over the um, water pump. Sorry, drawing a blank there. So I will bring over the water pump just for the sheer fact that that is actually a better pump. Um, the 2.5 is a better pump than the 2.0. And yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty relatively easy as far as unbolting that, unbolting that, swapping it back over, putting it to torque spec and putting it in sequence. Pretty easy. Um, I tend to put everything to timing before I even remove the belts just to see if the engine will time. And this one was actually off by a couple teeth. I went through a couple investigation and realized that the tensioner that was on it was gonzo. It was shot. I was able to just push down on the belt and the tensioner would move versus over here. I was able to test my theory and the belt don't move and that tensioner don't move. So I knew that that was absolutely wore out. Um, I did a bench test on the piston and it didn't even want to come back out after I put it on the bench or on the vice, I say. And yeah, that was, that was a fun ordeal to, to see that. That's awesome. Good thing I just didn't send it, even though it only has, you know, 25K on this engine, which is amazing. But moving on. So now, um, oil pan. We're going to move on to the bottom. The EJ20X oil pan is actually different than the 2.5. I don't see me having to swap everything over. I actually did some research and realized that. This actually has a little bit better oil passage and um, is a lot better actually for pressure as well. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the EJ20X oil pan on versus having to swap everything over. If uh, you do get a long block and it does not have the EJ20X baffles, pickup tube, and uh, you know obviously the pan, you can use the 2.5. Now that absolutely can go over. You can take it off, remove it, remove all the baffles inside, remove your pickup tube and whatnot, and swap everything over. Everything bolts right in place. So that's a good piece of knowledge to know that if you don't have it, you can absolutely swap everything over and then go from there. So now we're gonna move over here to this side of the sensor. Now, obviously guys, these are ABCS pulleys. You know, intake, exhaust, intake because that's the top where the air goes in exhaust because that's where it comes out so this is going to be the exhaust avcs that is the intake avcs now we are going to tune out the exhaust avcs for the sheer fact that usdm does not have that we have single avcs turbo engines so intake avcs will still function as it should because we'll swap over all of the sensors and then we'll walk right over there, grab that USDM intake manifold, and then we'll put it right back on here. Now, that harness is not going to have an allotted spot to plug in for an exhaust manifold, or excuse me, for the exhaust AVCS. So, as you can see here, the JDM would have a plug. It's not even going to have a plug, so you won't even have to worry about some dangling pigtail, you know, in your way and kind of, you know, messing with you OCD-wise. You're just going to have that one sensor that's going to sit there and as well on the other side. This is what it looks like with the valve cover, you know, as well. And you just leave it unplugged. I'm going to basically open up that door over there. The tuner's going to come in. We're going to back this thing out. We're going to go for a drive. We're going to tune all that out. And then, uh, yeah, customer is going to be happy as hell. I mean, who wouldn't be? So, obviously, it's time to get to work. And I'm kind of pumped to do so. So, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to start basically just going right through here and swapping everything over. Pretty easy stuff. So, with that said... I hope that these tips helped you with, uh, you know, finishing your own EJ20X project. And of course, this is definitely new to the USDM market. It's something that it, it's pretty new to me. This is actually my first EJ20X swap. So there's really not much knowledge around, you know, that people are willing to share, I guess, because I really can't find too much on it. And the people that I'm asking 
don't even live in my country, they have their own knowledge because that engine is readily available for them. So I'm glad that uh, we have things like Facebook and I'm able to communicate on a global aspect. So hopefully, you know, I got all the right information that I need. Uh, I've done a lot of JDM swaps and they're, they're pretty easy to do, guys. So don't be scared of jumping into these things and making them USDM worthy so that you can put them in, have the reliability because these things are a lot better engines than what they provided us. These, you know, they're pretty much race cars over there. They don't really care. You know, it's... uh nitrated cranks forged pistons you think we're going to get something like that absolutely not not unless you buy a freaking sti so you want to pay the money for that then absolutely that's sure but this engine right here was shipped to my door for 900 bucks with a 300 uh, or 300 with a 30 day warranty a leak down test and only 25,000 original miles so yeah it's a glorified ej20 STI. So yeah, it's an open block, but it built correctly and the tolerance taken off of it, a nice conservative tune, they can actually last quite a while. They, uh, yeah, you might want to look up the compression ratio of these things too. They're pretty nice. So especially with that said, we're going to do a little bit of modifications to this car. We're going to do the downpipe. We're going to do a larger turbo, you know, and, and go from there. But nothing too crazy, you know, STI pinks, you know, stuff like that. Just something, you know, relatively easy to drive. You know, it's just an automatic. It's something that he's going to want to enjoy and just boost into it every once in a while. It's a turbo legacy. Of course, you're going to want to put something on it. So we're going to do the exhaust. We're going to do all that and then make sure that this goes down the road in uh in a reliable manner so that's really what i'm all about is reliability and you know if you do it right you don't have to worry about it so if it breaks probably your freaking fault you know so i'm all about making sure it's done right if it's not done right i come out of my own pocket and i do it freaking right because that's how it should be done because i'm the guy doing it it's not like joe schmo down the road that you're getting a deal on i will charge you to do it right I'm not going to give you a deal because I'm not that guy to put his name on that. I don't do that. I'm sorry. If you can't meet my quality level, there's the freaking door. That's how it is. And that's how I am. I'm old school. I was raised that way. There's nothing much you can do about it. Mama didn't raise no freaking fool here. So with that said, I hate failure. I've learned enough from it. I guess that it... it I can't give any more life lessons because you probably don't want to hear it. So with that said, I'm Bill Schneider. This is Rumble Garage. I work on only cars with the stars, Subaru only. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end that uh, right there. You know, this is part one. Have a good day. Hey, actually, real quick, while I'm still thinking about it, can't believe I missed over this. this is one thing that I didn't want to forget about. What about that freaking air pump that's right there? What do you do about the air pump? What air pump? I don't know what you're talking about. That thing's normally located right here, right? Hmm. You're talking about that thing right down there, right? Too easy. It already took care of it just by doing the swap. They don't have those stupid air pumps on these engines, which is great. You don't have to even acclimate it over. So that's another thing that will get tuned out. Too easy.